Welcome to Real Relationship Goals, a podcast all about the realities of healthy relationships. Real Relationship Goals is a project of the Advocacy Center for Crime Victims and Children in Waco, Texas. If you or someone you know has experienced sexual violence or harassment and is seeking support, services, or needs more information, links to resources and our hotline number can be found in the description. The views expressed in this podcast are those of the hosts and guests and do not necessarily reflect those of their organizations or affiliates. Welcome back to Real Asianship Goals, episode 11. This is our last one of the season. We're so sorry to see it end, but we're so glad that you're joining us here again today. I'm Kyla. I'm also Kyla. (laughs) No, I'm Maria. (laughs) I'm Ariana. Awesome. And uh, we are going to go ahead and jump (laughs) on in today with our story, which Kyla Maria has for us. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Kyla, number one. Um, So... Please don't like turn this off as soon as you hear me talk about this, but what it is everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it it is everywhere right now, um, depending on when you're listening to it. But Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey have taken over any form of social media that there is. Um, it is flooded. And I love Taylor Swift as much as the next girly that loves Taylor Swift. But <laughs> um it just kind of is everywhere and people are going crazy over it I will read the comments sometimes out of just morbid curiosity they're like oh yeah like I love him better than this ex of hers and oh what a gentleman and they're like they're like I wasn't invested before but I'm thoroughly invested now and I'm like whoa pump your brakes Mm -hmm. you don't know these people you don't know what goes on behind Mm -hmm. it's like you know most celebrity couples it's Mm -hmm. like hey We are thoroughly invested, and we love them, and they are mom and dad, and it's like, stop. Mm -hmm. They are not your mother and father. (laughs) They are not, but it just, it's interesting. Everyone's on the the Travis Kelsey, Taylor Swift ship, including the NFL, and Mm -hmm. it is just fully invested Mm -hmm. in anything and everything. So Mm -hmm. that is my story for today. Thanks. A great example and lead in uh, just to our topic for today, which is parasocial relationships, uh, which is a phrase that has gained a lot of popularity over the last couple of years. Uh, But there's also just some confusion about, like, what does it mean? What does that look like? Um, And just kind of a quick explanation slash definition, just before we kind of dive in, is parasocial relationships are one-sided and exist whenever one person expends time, energy, money, etc., on the other person when the other person is generally more or less unaware of the first person's existence which feels harsh but is true yeah um and one of the most common examples of parasocial relationships is between fans and celebrities um so yeah i think that taylor swift and travis kelsey are a very good example and like their relationship and even just um Taylor Swift fans in general can be a good example, um, not just to isolate them because it across the board, like a, a huge example from whenever I was a little bit younger was One Direction. Mm. I'd say probably a huge example of parasocial relationships, but it exists on every platform. Like we see parasocial relationships with TikTok influencers, mm. YouTubers, um, just actors and actresses, musicians. It's it's really everywhere, um, for sure. But I guess just diving in, where do we want to get started? There's a lot of places to get started. Mm-hmm. Um, One Direction was a good example, though. I have friends that are, I've seen them in concert. I was kind of dragged to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I don't remember much of that concert, except for sure. Five Seconds of Summer mm-hmm. opening for them. But, um, like, I have friends who... Like, Harry Styles is, like, the biggest one mm-hmm. to come out of it. Yeah. Um, and they know everything about this man, including where he was born, his yeah. blood type. What time he was born. Yeah. Every time he gets a haircut, um, you know, what he's doing at every second of his life. And it is kind of like, no offense to my friends who might be listening to this. <laughs> I love you anyways. But mm-hmm. it's like, at some point, where do we draw the line Mm -hmm. of like being a fan and like 
unhealthy obsession. Yes. I'm sorry, because it is totally okay to admire people yeah. mm-hmm. and to enjoy them. And I and it's parasocial relationships aren't inherently unhealthy, yeah. which can be an, an unpopular opinion, but I stand firm on it because there are so many ways that they can be healthy. One of those is like positive modeling. Mm-hmm. Like if you find like a celebrity where you're like, wow. They like maybe it's an activist, and mm-hmm. you're like, "Wow, like I really care about this issue, and they're making big strides, and I want to follow that and see what they do, and like, I want to learn from them." Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Like that's great. Mm-hmm. Or um, like, and it's okay to be invested in other mm-hmm. people's lives and to care. People are driven by connection. Mm-hmm. We need to connect with other people in, in order to live. And it's okay to be invested and to care, but it's all about recognizing kind of that line Mm -hmm. where you go from healthily invested Mm -hmm. to kind of some more, I think, obsessive behaviors. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the line that we want to talk about today. Mm -hmm. I love, you know, my, I have my celebrities that I follow, Mm -hmm. like three of them, like Emma Watson, Aubrey Plaza, and um, Ryan Reynolds. Mm -hmm. But it's, yeah. Love Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Um, but it's not like I think knowing like some details about them is good, but I think when you start to like every waking moment and like mm-hmm. knowing these like intimate details that maybe even they don't know about themselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know. I, like, I only I like, yeah. where did you get this information from? Like, yeah. I don't even know about this information. Yeah. So, I don't remember me doing that. Yeah, pulling up different documentation mm-hmm. and stuff with like birth certificates. Birth certificates. Yeah. I remember yeah. that was a thing with like One Direction fans, like finding their birth certificates and like things like that. Yeah, it's just that's it's a lot. Respect their privacy. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I think like another big kind of more kind of like unhealthy behavior is like emotional investment. Mm-hmm. It, it once again wonderful to be invested and to feel connected to people, and you know that we are big fans of empathy here in the mm-hmm. PE family. Um, but if like the celebrities highs or your highs and their lows or your lows Mm -hmm. and like if they're having a hard time and it puts you in a really like depressive or like anxious or a really mentally unwell state Mm -hmm. I think that's a pretty big indicator that it's time to start making some adjustments and we need to start engaging with this in a healthier way. Mm-hmm. That's kind of my thought. Right. Because like, yes, you can empathize with that person um, and like understand how they might feel in that situation. If they're feeling upset or if they're going through a hard time, you might be able to empathize with that person. Mm-hmm. But if it shifts to where it affects like your every waking moment Mm -hmm. your everyday movement and how you engage with yourself and others Mm -hmm. that's where it kind of takes the turn Mm -hmm. so and like you said then there's adjustments that needs to be made Mm -hmm. um but yeah parasocial relationships i mean i'm not big on parasocial relationships i mean like i like celebrities like Mm -hmm. i follow a couple of them but i'm not that deeply Mm -hmm. invested into them like like when i see like their achievements or things like that i'm like oh that's great that's wonderful for them Mm -hmm. when they're in like hardships or anything like that i can empathize with them and understand like like it's very like genuine and authentic like Mm -hmm. if they're showing like they're having like their depression um stages of their lives or whatever the case may be it's more authentic and genuine. Like that's something a lot of people might be able to relate to in even positive aspects of their lives. If they can relate to that as well, it's good. Um, but to be deeply invested mm-hmm. in their everyday lives. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's not for you. It's not for me. It's like the <laughs> Jada and Will Smith thing that's I'm going on. I was thinking about that. that. You were saying that and I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, like the whole, like Everybody you know. has to have an opinion. Yeah, it's like she's like, yeah, we've been separated for I don't know how many years, and they're they're like memeing it all out and everything, and it's every everyone's like, oh yeah, like Jada's just doing this for this, or like poor Will, and like 
like viciously taking sides and it's like listen let them tell their stories and you can have your opinion but like don't there's not... an extreme that it doesn't need to be taken to and it's and i think that something that also happens a lot the deeper that folks kind of engage with parasocial relationships or if they allow it to remain kind of like unchecked is like the sense of entitlement mm -hmm. Of it's like, oh, well, you've always given me this information before, or like, well, I'm your fan. Like, like I think, and I don't necessarily have strong feelings one way or another on this particular thing, but I think of um, a, very, a pretty recent kind of incident with like Doja Cat and like her fans, mm -hmm. of like one of her fans like tweeting and being like, oh, but like you love us because we're your fans. And she was like, I don't love you, I don't know you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, like, that blew up on the internet, and, like, a lot of folks were talking about that, and I, I think that that can also tie into this, because it's, I see both sides to a degree mm -hmm. of, like, it is very possible to, like, appreciate, and it's, like, I appreciate, like, the support, and I feel that care, and, like, I love you in a certain way, mm -hmm. yeah. but it's not the same, like, we're not, like, we don't have that relationship, so, like, I don't love you in this other way, so I definitely see, like, some some validity and kind of like what she was saying of like I don't know you I can't love you mm -hmm. um and I think that to a degree like the deeper we kind of fall into unhealthy behaviors and parasocial relationships the more we feel entitled to yeah. like affection from these people who we feel like we know mm -hmm. but, but we don't we we, we we are only capable of knowing the parts of them that they show to us mm -hmm. and that they share with us which for safety and for their own mental health and privacy hopefully is not everything mm -hmm. um it's i think we're very lucky whenever influencers and folks and just everyday folks that become influencers on like tiktok and things like that i think i have such deep admiration for the genuineness and authenticity that people display especially in sharing like struggles mm -hmm. and um just everyday aspects of being human where like people are able to form community mm -hmm. and kind of like share in those spaces and connect with each other in spaces that are kind of created by these content creators mm -hmm. <laughs> i think that's a cool thing and i think it can be a very healthy thing but at the same time i think sometimes folks are inclined to like misconstrue of like oh well i know you it's no you just mm -hmm. feel like you know me mm -hmm. but, like you don't really know me mm -hmm. and that's okay we're not supposed to know everyone Everybody. everyone yeah. in the world and it's it's okay to have this parasocial relationship mm -hmm. with them it's okay for you to just be someone who like consumes what they produce mm -hmm. and you can support them because you care about them and you're invested in them so you're able to just like share that support, share that good energy. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, for your own health and safety, establish kind of healthy boundaries mm -hmm. to kind of prevent it from taking that step too far. So I think I kind of want to like shift our conversation to kind of focus on that kind of moving forward of like, what are like some healthy boundaries that folks maybe can kind of establish for themselves like, to avoid kind of tripping over that line, I guess. I think just recognizing that there are people, too. Mm -hmm. And so, like, as a person, I don't want everyone to know every intimate detail of my life. I will share what I want to share on, like, social media, mm -hmm. and that's sparingly. <laughs> um, but I don't want to know every time, you know, I want everyone to know, like, today I woke up at... 30 minutes before work and <laughs> only 20 minutes before work. but you know and then I chose my clothes this way and I did this and like I don't nobody nobody needs it. a nobody needs to know that about me because I'm just me and mm -hmm. b like I don't want everyone to know about that so like put yourself empathize with them mm -hmm. in that aspect and like put yourself in their shoes and be like hey like if I were, you know, a person who has this, like, yes, like, maybe I'm a celebrity because I chose to be a celebrity, or, like, I chose this career that makes me more likely to be a celebrity, mm -hmm. but at the same time, like, they have their boundaries as well, and you need to respect those boundaries, especially when it comes to, like, some celebrities having children, and they don't yes. want 
the children, the children to yes. be shown or like Faith, their names. Their names. Yes. Yeah, like that needs to be respected and you don't need to be FBI sleuthing and like oh. Oh, no. figuring all of that out. Like let them have that one part in their life that they want to keep for themselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like they don't keep asking. Yeah. Or requesting. Yeah. For sure. Yes, I feel very strongly about that one too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. I also think like to a degree it can be helpful just to create boundaries for yourself mm-hmm. of like if you're starting to notice and it's like wow I'm thinking about this all the time or like I'm thinking about this person all the time maybe um like take a break or kind of s- take steps to limit your exposure like to that person in their life like I know that Twitter and I'm sure others, but especially Twitter comes to my mind first, of there are like uh, filtering tools that you can use to like block out specific words mm-hmm. so that on your timeline you won't see any posts that have certain words in them. Mm-hmm. So you could do that to kind of filter out like fan accounts and things like that to where maybe you can kind of slow down the onslaught of like information just to kind of avoid that temptation of like consuming so much information. Yeah. And just kind of like trying to create that healthy boundary just with social media in general, I think is a good kind of step. Yep. Limit mm-hmm. your screen time. Yeah. <laughs> Any other thoughts? I think that's it. Good. All right. Well, then in that case, we're going to transition over into our relationship goal brought to us by Ariana. Yes, yes. So when engaging in parasocial relationships, um, just make sure that you are creating those healthy boundaries for yourself. Um, It's wonderful to be able to admire people and look up to them and in a way have them help you grow in aspects that you want to grow in. Um, But also if you start to notice that it it's taking a toll on your mental, emotional, or even financial health, Mm -hmm. um, please prioritize yourself and take a break. That is my relationship goal. That's a good one. You are worth it. You are. Prioritize you. Yes. Um, and then our recommendation is brought to us by Maria. Hi, I'm Maria. <laughs> We're kind of laughing. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, so my recommendation today is going to be coffee. I <laughs> am currently drinking one right now for those of you who aren't watching on the, yeah. the tube. Mm-hmm. Um, but coffee from anywhere, mm-hmm. any place. Yes. Support local coffee places. Yes. If you're looking at this, don't look at where my coffee yeah. from. Um, but so local coffee places usually end up having like the best oh, coffee so ever, and great vibes, and just the atmosphere is wonderful. But yeah, coffee, yes, and supporting local businesses. I would say, especially if you're in our Waco area, Waco has incredible local coffee yes. shops. I love them very much. Mm-hmm. Um, so yes, very good stuff. Uh, But thank you guys so much for joining us, not only today, but just for this whole season. Uh, We've had a lot of fun just exploring these different things for you. In the meantime, while you're waiting for real relationship goals to make a reappearance next year and you're just craving more P&E content, uh, feel free to follow us on Instagram at ACCVC underscore prevention. Or you can also follow the Advocacy Center on Facebook or Instagram at advocacy underscore Waco. Um, and in the meantime, also be sure that you're following um, Real Asianship Goals anywhere you get your podcasts and on YouTube at ACCVC underscore prevention so you don't miss out on any great Real Asianship Goals content. And we will see you next semester. Bye. Adios. <laughs>Thanks so much for tuning in to Real Relationship Goals. This episode was produced by the Prevention and Education Department of the Advocacy Center for Crime Victims and Children in Waco, Texas. You can follow us on Instagram at ACCVC underscore prevention. See you next time.